So, you want to read Nietzsche. Problem is, you don't know where to start. This video is for you. We'll go over which books to read and in what order, and some bonus recommendations to take your understanding of Nietzsche's philosophy to another level. If you want to have this video in text format, to keep track of your reading, we have a nifty PDF file for download. Just click the link in the description. Without further ado, let's jump in. Step 1. Don't start with Da Spoke Zarathustra. It's tempting to jump straight into Nietzsche's most famous and alluring work. However, chances are you wouldn't understand much of it, and even worse, fill in the gaps in your understanding with your own personal interpretation, which is fine in theory, but without a solid knowledge base, you're bound to make mistakes. The writing style in Zarathustra is cryptic. There's a lot of metaphor and difficult symbolism. Zarathustra is a wonderful book, but save it for later. The experience will be much more enjoyable when you're ready. Step 2. The University Method This step is not unique to Nietzsche, but applicable to any and all philosophers whose primary works you want to read. Don't simply jump into their primary texts, but get some background information first from second sources. How to know which sources to trust? Use the university method. Step 1. Find out which university has the best philosophy department in your language. Step 2. Find out which textbooks they use in their first year philosophy curricula. Step 3. Pick a textbook that covers the philosopher you want to learn more of. Step 4. Read the whole thing or just the relevant passages. If you do this, you'll have a solid grasp of the philosopher's entire work and some relevant historical background knowledge. I don't recommend jumping straight into any primary texts of a philosopher, and certainly not a difficult one like Nietzsche. By using the university method, you can be sure you get a good quality secondary source. If you think reading secondary texts like this is a waste of time, please reconsider. Reading Nietzsche's own work will go twice as fast if you've done the homework beforehand. I honestly don't think this step can be skipped if you really want to understand Nietzsche and not just read Nietzsche. Step 3. Personal, optional recommendations. At this point, I'd like to make two personal recommendations, which are totally optional, but, in my opinion, worth your time and effort. The first is a really short book by Michael Tanner. It's called Nietzsche, A Very Short Introduction. As the title says, it's short. You can read it in a day. But it will get you up to speed with a broad overview of Nietzsche's thought and his key concepts from a respected Nietzsche scholar. Secondly, I heartily recommend Walter Kaufmann's Nietzsche, Philosopher, Psychologist, Antichrist. This book was instrumental in restoring Nietzsche's reputation after World War II. It has been out since 1950 and has remained in print ever since. The book is not without its flaws or problems. But if you have read this, you'll be ahead of the game in your understanding of Nietzsche. I realize most people will want to jump into Nietzsche's primary works. So let's get on with it. Step 4. Nietzsche's main works. All of Nietzsche's works are worth your time and effort. But some are easier to understand than others, and some books occupy a more important place in the Nietzschean corpus than others. The following list is made with all these caveats in mind. We recommend you read Nietzsche in this order. 1. On the genealogy of morals. 2. Beyond Good and Evil 3. Twilight of the Idols and the Antichrist 4. The Gay Science 5. Thus Spoke Zarathustra 
the reason we recommend starting with the genealogy is because it's the most clear of Nietzsche's works. There is little aphorism and metaphor. It's the most classically philosophical work, which means it's easier to read than most of his other works. It gives you a good knowledge base to tackle beyond good and evil. And from there, you can explore the ideas in Twilight of the Idols and the Antichrist. The gay science, then, will fill in some remaining gaps. And then, we believe, you're ready to tackle Nietzsche's masterpiece, Thus Spoke Zarathustra. Other works by Nietzsche are optional, but recommended. Daybreak, for example, offers a good introduction, but keep in mind Nietzsche's ideas hadn't been fully developed at the point of writing it. The same applies to human all to human. Ecce Homo is an intellectual biography of sorts and is worth reading also. The birth of tragedy does not quite fit with the rest of the Nietzschean corpus and deals mainly with the Apollonian-Dionysian distinction which has become famous and influential but is also hardly referenced in Nietzsche's other works. If you have a solid grasp of the five titles mentioned, you can do whatever you want with Nietzsche's other writings. You'll be well equipped to understand them very, very well. Conclusion We realize this seems like a lot of work, but we also promise it's worth it. We have done an entire video series on Nietzsche's Beyond Good and Evil right here on this channel, which serves as a good introduction to the work. We have also discussed Daybreak, one of Nietzsche's first books. A video series on, on the genealogy of morals is in the works. So stay tuned and please subscribe if you want to be notified when the series goes live. If you're interested in keeping this list in a cheat sheet format while you're working through the books, you can download a PDF file by clicking the link in the description. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.